a cascade of light bursts over the mountain ranges of Equestria, the sun's first beams bursting into a million colors. Its light caressed the land like a painter's palette, long shadows forming behind anything daring enough to rise above the ground. Hills were splattered with gold, their slopes of grass melting into the warm light. Trees were shown with liquid fire, their leaves curling to catch the rays of life-giving light. Where the sky was dark sapphire blue, stars still shone, twinkling to the eye of an observer. They continued to glimmer, even though their realm was being chased away by the wave of soft purples and blues. The moon still sparkled with a divine glow as it continued to reflect the wonders of the sun. On a raised outcropping of a large weathered mountain sat a regal figure, her mane and tail billowing in an unseen wind. Her horn glowed a soft, brilliant gold, its glow lightly illuminating the space around her. The regalia she wore had lost its luster to time, once having been shining enough to actually sparkle in the very sunlight she was bringing about. Celestia sat on a ridge above a crumbling citadel, a gentle smile doning her muzzle. The city itself remained in the shadows, the sun having yet to break through the many forests and rolling hills and mountains in its path. She herself was slowing down the process altogether, for she wanted to relish these moments of twilight. With the sun barely peeking above the horizon, she figured pushing it down a little and letting it stay a while longer wouldn't hurt too much. Though the task of raising the sun was one that required energy and concentration, she had been doing it long enough to call it second nature. It came as easy to her as breathing the air she so lived in and walking on the ground created by those older than time itself. With a soft hum, Celestia allowed some of her magic to spark over to a teapot, a simple spell to heat it up. Knowing she had plenty of time to wait, she turned her attention to the city before her and the many lands beyond. Celestia had graced this view countless times in her long, long life. She had been there when there was nothing but grass and trees and beautiful mountain flowers. She was present for the first group of ponies to ever settle down on the ridge, quickly erecting the first houses for occupation. She was there when they dedicated the land and named it after the mountain its soul resided on, Canterlot Canterhorn. She had watched it grow into the shiny capital of Equestria and subsequently turn into a shell of its former glory. Now every pony was gone. In all the lands round about, no pony. No pony, but Celestia. It had been ages since Celestia had seen a pony. She couldn't remember how many moons or how many birthdays. She had lost track of time, for keeping time wasn't necessary. At least, not anymore. That, however, did not mean she didn't know when her time was to come to an end. She could feel it in her bones. She could see it in the dulling gray hairs of her once shimmering mane and tail. Her eyes twinkled with years beyond any pony could ever imagine, and she knew that deep within her heart it was almost time. Even the china of which she used would only be useful for a few more brews. Its glossing sheen laced with webbing cracks, 
and any designs having long faded away. As the teapot began to whistle, Celestia cast her eyes at it and watched as her magic left its confines. She set two teacups onto two small plates and set stirring spoons behind them. Finally, she placed a tiny platter of sugar cubes between the setup and poured tea into both cups, adding a cube or two for good measure. Bringing hers to her lips, she blew softly on the steaming tea and sipped as she looked over her beautiful land. The soft rustling of leaves swaying was melodic, and Celestia smiled at the sound. Hello, old friend, Celestia murmured as she lowered her tea, still watching the wind blow gently across nature's paradisical land. I would never have been able to sneak up on you, would I? A hushed voice whispered, voiced as soft as the wind. As much as I would have been able to delay the inevitable, Celestia agreed. Her ears flickered at the sound of clinking porcelain, and Celestia took another sip. It's been a long time coming, Celestia. The figure hushed. The last time I was here, it was over a thousand moons ago, to accompany your... It's honey jasmine with a hint of mint. Celestia explained suddenly, her gaze never strained from the scenery. What do you think? A soft sip could be heard just across from her on the smooth plateau. Perhaps a little more sugar. The mare commented quietly. There's plenty of sugar, my friend. Celestia motioned to the cubes on the plate. After all... We're in no need to rush. The small plink of water and the swish of a spoon let Celestia rest easier, the rays of light breaking the dawn and livening the sky was truly a wonder to behold, and Celestia watched it all with a renewed sense of wonder, watching as the warm blazing light began its journey across the city of Canterlot. Even now, after so many years, Celestia wondered for the millionth time how she still managed watching over such an old city as it dissolved into the dust it was built from. Time is a fickle sink, Celestia finally said. It gives and it takes, and whatever we do with it, we can never regain the time to see, nor have events pass unfold once more. The figure remained in silent contemplation. Alison, I'm sure you've learned over the years. Celestia nodded. And countless times, might I add, you were always there to comfort me in the end. But you still cannot fathom the turmoil I have felt each time you appeared to one close to me. The figure giggled lightly almost sounding nothing more than the very grass they were surrounded by. No, I suppose I can't, but each of them always had plenty of things to say about you. Good things, I hope, Celestia just did, and the two shared a simple laugh, with the smile on her muzzle still present. Her eyes took on a wistful sheen, and she took a nice, long, and comforting sip of tea. It is nice to finally see and commune with another intelligent being, Celestia said. For too long, I feel. I have been left to my own devices. It was about time some pony knocked more sense into me. The figure's muzzle could be seen curling upwards within the shadows of her hood. Yet, I fear... I am unfortunately the wrong pony for that job. Every pony has their weaknesses, 
Celestia smiled, some more than others. Why do I feel that you fall into the former category? The cloak mirror joked, and they once more shared a laugh. After that, a silence fell between the two again, and they continued to watch the beautiful golden light of the sun continue to bring brightness to the day and lighten up the mountains of Canterhorn. It, Celestia began. It truly has been a while since you've last come, hasn't it? Over a thousand moons. The mare murmured once more. For your... For my sister. Yes, Celestia whispered, long, long ago, I can still remember the day. If you said otherwise, I might have thought less of you. Celestia breathed. She could feel her gaze center down her, and Celestia found her mind wandering to the memory. It was a winter night, Celestia reminisced. Ironically enough, on the very night for which the stars shone the longest, mere days before, before heartswarming eve, she had gone out to match the night sky at the dawn of my sun. And you saw me standing there, conversing with her just as we are right now. The mare finished. She had told me that if you never found out, she had hidden a present within your chambers that comprised of... A mosaic of all the elements of harmony, my sister and I watching benevolently over rolling hills, the setting sun, and the waxing moon. Precisely. The mare nodded. Thinking back even further, Celestia could feel her eyes moisten with memories. And many more moons before that, when you, you took Twilight Interference away as well. Twilight was and still is amazed by the prospect of me being a living, breathing manifestation of a force of the universe. The mare chuckled. It gets overbearing at times. Celestia had to blink away the tears as she thought of all the good times she had. With the elements, with Luna, the countless Gallus, the many Avengers, the diplomatic missions, the villains and the reformed, Nightmare Moon, the elements of harmony themselves, the stories Celestia shared with Luna after her many years of banishment. Ye yes Celestia muttered, choking back a sob. It's been so very long. And you have endured these many years well, Celestia. The mayor said. Your title came crashing down of your nation. You've taken to controlling both the sun and the moon. You brought it upon yourself to maintain whole cities and villages in the hopes that one day every pony would live happy, harmonious lives. And yet, I'm still alone, as I'm seemingly destined to remain. Celestia whispered, tears now streaking her fur. Celestia finally, shakingly, let her magic come to a stop, shakingly putting her teacup down. It rattled before coming to a standstill. Celestia couldn't help it. With her vision misty, she turned her head to finally look at the figure sitting beside her. It's been so, so long, mistress. Celestia wept. You are the first pony I've spoken to in m millennium. And it's taken so much to keep myself from jumping the lonely bend and... Celestia blinked. Before a shaky, raspy giggle escaped her lips, Celestia couldn't help but pull a hook to her muscle. S see I've even let my speech slip into 
the despair. That much is to be expected. Mistress Death smiled softly. It has pained me all these years to watch you languish on your own, dear friend. I hope you know that. Oh, I know. Celestia said, composing herself. At times, I had thought you to be nothing more than a bee that had cursed met me with endless silence and the spirit of a lone wanderer. Alas, I always found that I thought to myself and it seemed company enough. Death continued to listen intently, hearing Celestia's words with a caring gaze. And I am sorry, Celestia. I am so very sorry for not having come sooner. It is not me, but higher powers even I cannot explain that are at work. I come when time is short and lives are spent. You, you still had so much time left. I couldn't do anything to that. Even when I... Celestia began to speak in a voice barely audible. Even when I truly considered other methods of going out, of escaping my lonely misery. The question hung in the air and Celestia saw that Death would not answer. At least, not yet. Celestia turned to look at the blue sky once more, and lit her horn once more. Helping the sun in its ascent, light began to cascade over the buildings of Canterlot, as the magentas and pinks in the sky began to merge into the gold of the sun, in the blue of the sky, the moon was dulling in its brilliance as the sun overtook the sky and the stars blinked out one by one. Yes, Death finally replied. I hated myself watching you in those states, but as I said, I only come when I am needed. It is the burden I must carry, had to carry. She turned to look at the sun goddess, whose attention remained on the landscape before her. She could see fresh new tears beginning to form. You are my last word, Celestia. You are the final beacon connecting me to this plane of existence. I'm sure there are other reapers out there assigned to the ponies and otherwise who have left your land. But for this, you are my final assignment. The, the first shall be the last. Celestia cried softly. And the, the last shall be the f first. Death put a hoof on Celestia's shoulder. You can finally join the others in the realms beyond, Celestia. This is what you have always wanted, is it not? Y yes mistress. Celestia wept. And yet, yet, that is what pulls me back. Death furled her brows, her cloak billowing in confusion. How so? It's been too long, to Celestia said, regaining her stability once more. And I f fear that they will all have forgotten me. Mistress Death paused as she watched Celestia close her eyes painfully before she hugged Celestia tightly. My dear. Death comforted. Ever since they joined the multitudes of other souls in the realms beyond, they have done nothing but prepare for your glorious arrival. 
Do not be delusioned in thinking otherwise, for I cannot tell you how many times Pinkie Pie has bugged me in asking for details of the time of your return. It seriously bothers me, and will bother me yet, how she is even capable of the thing she does in the next plane of existence. The mention of Pinkie Pie's antics finally got a good heartly laugh out of the former princess, and Death let go of her embrace. Celestia giggled. Dear me, after all these years, you still don't know how to line up the day despite your namesake. Hmm? Like you wouldn't believe, sister. Death smiled. A comfortable silence finally rested between the two friends and they watched the encroaching light begin to stretch across the city, casting its extra glow on any surrounding surface. As they watched a few birds chirp by, Death turned to Celestia with a soft gaze in finality. It is time, Celestia. She announced, Are you ready? Celestia blinked as she turned her gaze to Mistress Death. A melancholic smile stretched across her lips. I just have one question. Of course. Celestia bit her lip, looking out one last time at the swaying forest, the biddling clouds, and the vestiges of civilization. Will it hurt? Death smiled. Only if you wanted to. Celestia's eyes twinkled with mirth. Then I think I'll pass. And what of your duties with the sun and moon? Celestia glanced up at the sky, feeling for the celestial body she controlled. She smiled. I think it's safe to say one final guide that Ryzen for all time's sake wouldn't harm an opponent. The golden light of the sun finally shattered the darkness that surrounded all of Canterhorn and Canterlot. As the light finally stretched onto a small plateau overlooking the crumbling city, one could see two cups of tea, a plate of sugar cubes, and a still piping hot teapot. With both cups carrying dregs of the tea, of which was partaken of, no other sign of any pony having been there was present. Soon, the set of China became just another remnant of an age long gone by, and the traces of a sparkling conversation. But, the wind carries many words, and if one listens close enough, they can still hear the glad tidings of great joy of a group of souls as they received one of their own, a few final words echoing with happiness and contentment. Hello, old friend.